And though I can fight, I'd much rather recite. That's entertainment. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. And do you hear that? Do you smell that? Can you taste that? Ladies and gentlemen, we are approaching fast on the highway to hell to Halloween. Now, I wanted to break from the norm a little bit in today's video, and I wanted to talk about something that's very near and dear to me. On YouTube, my fellow compatriots, they've talked about the Nightmare series and the Friday the 13th series to death. Pun intended. But today, I wanted to look at something that is not as talked about. Something that we all grew up on and we all know. But it doesn't get the love it deserves, in my opinion. That is anthology horror. When you think of anthology horror, you think of shows like Goosebumps and Are You Afraid of the Dark? Maybe Tales from the Crypt. But you cannot mention the word anthology horror and not think of Rod one Serling's juggernaut the Twilight that swept Zone. over the 60s. Rod Serling was, was the master of storytelling and he'd always leave you wanting more. I think that was one of the best tokens to his show and why it stuck around for so long and it's the reason why that show is still so popular. Hell, even a couple years back, Jordan Peele made a remake of The Twilight Zone. Every few years, a remake is made. But which one is the best? Is it the Jordan Peele one? Is it the original one? One I think that gets criminally underlooked is what we're going to be taking a look at in today's video. The 1980s version of The Twilight Zone. Ah, uh, yes, when you think of the 80s, you think of glitter, glitz, tight pants. But we're not going to get into that today. On the heels of Vietnam, and right in the midst of the Cold War, the commentary on this new version of this beloved classic really rung true and was able to make such memorable episodes that we still remember to this day. Well, I do, of course. So, sit back and experience a reviewer who is going to stumble and stutter his way through as I bring you upon the Twilight Zone in the, in the 1980s. Choice. The first episode we're going to take a look at today, today is Deal Horror Icon, Wes Craven. That's right, this episode came out in the first season, not even a year after release of Nightmare on Elm Street. All over it. And you can tell from this the has Wes Craven's hand kind of humor that's littered throughout the episode and the wonderful character work. This episode most notably sticks out by having Morgan Freeman as one of the lead characters. On a random night in a New Jersey town, when a group of friends are meeting for a game of cards, they notice that one of the players sitting in for their buddy has a mysterious connection to the number six. As the game goes along, they start to notice, is he the devil? As the episode unravels, you start to think, what is the devil there for? Now this episode you'd think would be very serious in tone, but like I said, there is that kind of comedic undertone and very lightheartedness throughout. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, man, that proves it, man. It's him. It's the guy. But what's the devil doing here in New Jersey? What are you talking about, Tony? I think he lives here. Wes Craven's kind of touch for the episode is so kind of smooth and you feel like you're almost wrapped up in a warm blanket throughout. Like these people you're watching have been friends for years. Everyone has their flaws and they all have their hitches that they all kind of get hung up on. But at the end of the day, they're all friends and they're all kind of there for each other. Now, Morgan Freeman is fantastic in this episode. And this was a couple of years before he got his big break in movies like Glory and Driving Miss Daisy. Another character that is fantastic is Nick, who is played by Dan Hendaya. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. He's been in movies like Clueless and... I think he was in Aliens Resurrections too. He is so fantastic as the devil character. He plays it in such a way that you almost, he almost feels like your next door neighbor. Someone that you wouldn't mind having a beer with, but you don't want to get too much on his dark side, being, you know, he's the, the Prince of Darkness. Gentlemen, please. Why don't we make a little game of it? The music throughout this episode, like I said, reminds me of a nice warm hug. 
If you have not seen this episode, I highly recommend it. It has become a staple that every single time I'm having a hard time, I like to go back and watch the episode. You will not be disappointed in Dealer's Choice. And unlike a lot of Twilight Zone episodes, without spoiling, you get a resolution at the end of it that is very warm and welcoming. And I think it's another reason why it's a really big comfort watch to me. Peter, thank you for your hospitality. Maybe I can host the next game. I'll try to make sure that each one of you is invited. Good night, gentlemen. So definitely check out Dealer's Choice. All the episodes I'm going to talk about here, all two of them, are free to watch on YouTube. So I'm going to leave a link down below of the two episodes I'm going to talk about, and I highly recommend you check them out and let me know what you thought about them. The next episode that I want to talk to completely takes a left turn from the atmosphere and feeling of Dealer's Choice. This episode two is in the first season, and it's called William Friedkin. As you notice, the 80s Twilight Zone has a lot of amazing directors and actors that lent their work to this series remake. Nightcrawlers is about inhabitants of this roadside diner in the middle of a heavy rainstorm when a police officer tells the well, patrons of the diner somewhere that there was people a shooting at a land. hotel. You start to get this weird feeling that one of the patrons might be the one who did it. For this episode, you have to talk about two performances in particular. James Whitmore, who plays this very nosy, persistent cop, and Scott Pullen, who plays this Vietnam veteran that has carried a little bit more than PTSD back from the Vietnam War. These two go back and forth like a serious game of chess and it's just cinema to watch. Scott Pullen in particular, the performance he gives, you really get that feeling that he's gone through this heavy, heavy guilt and suffering from the Vietnam War. I got my first one in the thigh. And the next one went through my hand. Right through the back and out the palm. I dropped my rifle, and when I reached down for it, my hand went into something soft and sticky. You don't have to go through all this. Oh, yeah, man, I know! But now I want to. Guys were fighting and screaming, dying all around me. I could, I could feel the bullets tugging at the cloth of my uniform as they went through. And it wouldn't be an episode with the Twilight Zone if it didn't have a supernatural aspect to it as well. I really recommend this episode. Tell this is a William Friedkin from everything from the direction. Show. You can the tension, the very close knit atmosphere. It reminds me a lot of his work in The Exorcist. And a lot of people they don't know, William Friedkin actually directed the remake of Twelve Angry Men, which is fantastic. And it really you really get that sense of conflict and hate in one small spot. This episode has so many elements that I think was borrowed in another great anthology episode in the X-Files called Sleepless, where a Vietnam vet has special powers that he uses on other people that were in his squad. Both episodes are fantastic, but in this one here, the ending will leave your jaw on the ground. There's so much amazing work, I highly recommend checking it out. These, both these episodes feel like they are two hours long, but they're barely 20 minutes. And that is why I love anthology so much, because you have such a small portion of time to use, and you really have to kind of fill those spaces. And in both these episodes, even though the tone is completely different in both, they both do it. From the actors to the direction, the music also is fantastic in both episodes. You can tell they both have this kind of 80s blues jazz kind of feel to them, but they both fit so, so perfectly. I cannot speak enough on this episode, on both these episodes really. If I were, I'd be going on longer than both the episodes combined. Dealer's Choice and Nightcrawlers, you have to check out both of these episodes. I don't want to go into too much spoilers because I'd be giving away such a treat to watch. Definitely check them out. Let me know what you thought about it, and let me know if you want me to talk about more anthology horror, be it more episodes of The Twilight Zone, some X-Files Creature of the Week episodes, Goosebumps, Are You Afraid of the Dark? 
I love it all, and it's the perfect season to talk about it. Guys, I'd really appreciate it if you drop me a subscribe so you can help me grow this channel and so I can hang out with you guys more. Let me know what you thought about the episodes. Let me know what episodes you want me to check out in the future. I love you all, and until next time, I will see you later. Thank you.